All right, we are live. Yeah, and I can't read that from here, but somebody said hello. Sean. <laughs> so yeah, we'll put our glasses on. We're, yeah, gonna, we're gonna keep going back and forth. <laughs> people we got like nine people we'll give it a minute here i don't even know what i'm doing <laughs> does it make any watch a commercial before you yep <laughs> all right i'm making money yeah <laughs> hey there's brandon cosmos anthony tim you're gonna turn your volume down on there sage yeah i want feedback although i really like you know i'm known for <laughs> Although I really like, you know, I'm known for... Okay, echoes. Was, echoes, yeah. <laughs> my favorite comment on my last one was, uh, I've had it. <laughs> the guy, you don't see the guy again. It wasn't it's, even that annoying, I didn't I, think. You know, it it was a bit annoying, um, but we know how to not do that again. So, how come I don't have all the comments? Uh, let's see, live. Do that. I don't know, maybe I've got to push it here. Then turn it sideways. There we go. Wow, there's an ambulance coming. And of course the dogs are barking. The dogs have been barking all day. I don't even hear them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so the the standing joke, you ever see the Red Green show? Uh-huh. So the standing joke, if you ever listen in the background, it's shotguns, dog sparking, and chainsaws. Oh. <laughs> That's like throughout the entire show. I never pay attention to that. I part. know, nobody hears it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes into the background. Oh, well. So I'm very close to starting the 4104. Uh, just a couple things left to do that I didn't get quite done today. Um, I had to replace the fuel filter housing on it. Uh, it is filled, the, all the coolant hoses and everything are on it. There's one hose that I need to replace still, but since I'm gonna flush it, I had to or I'll have to order it. Um, everything else has really good hoses for the cooling system on it. The uh, I'll let that ambulance go by here. Um, the drive shaft is in, and but I don't have the caps on it, so I gotta put the caps on it. I don't want that to flop around in there. Uh, just a couple other little things. Air compressor line, the, the air hose needs to be hooked up. The shutdown needs to be hooked up. Uh, literally maybe 45 minutes worth of work, and, it's, and then I'll be starting it. I gotta hook the grounds up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's filled with water and all, the cradle's all in and the, basically ready to go. So Sage stopped by, he's down here working in Tennessee. I just was in the neighborhood of, <laughs> you know. No, I, I brought some stuff down to him. I was gonna, supposed to bring a Volkswagen engine down uh, to let him play with. And I went to go grab it out of my Volkswagen garage and one of my buddies had grabbed it and took it over to his shop because he thought he needed a part off of it and took it all apart and then he didn't need the part so i'll the engine will get to him at some point it'll get to you but it just uh wasn't available today so i had some other stuff we we picked up a bunch of glass for one of my buses today and I, scott had asked to get a pair of uh, windshields so i was bringing the windshields down thank you for that by the way sure and then i'll uh i'll get you a check here in just a little bit too well don't, don't let me forget yeah. the uh Tomorrow, Bo Noble is coming. Bo's got an MCI, so he'll be here tomorrow. He's gonna, I think he's going to stay the night at Lance's place tonight. Um, I don't remember what else I got going on. So his bus is quite a bit. Yeah, so he was going to bring me that old engine. I didn't. I never talked about it on the YouTube channel. Oh. I talked about it on Patreon. Okay. Um, but yeah, he's going to give me that old engine. It's a 1600, but it's a aluminum case. Is that what it is? Or No. So the original cases were magnesium. Ah, got it. And then they went to a magnesium aluminum. It's an alloy that was much stronger when the horsepower got greater. They needed the, uh, they needed the case to be a stronger case. And then since then, like the aftermarket, I don't know if they have an all aluminum, but it's mostly all alloys nowadays. Like if you get an aftermarket one, but it's all about heat dissipation and magnesium was, did a really nice job of dissipating you know, wicking the heat away from the uh, engine. And so that's why they used it at the beginning. And I don't know if it seems like, I mean, Silversides were using aluminum in the early 40s, but uh, maybe they didn't have access to it. But why would, you know, why they didn't do aluminum to begin with? Um, 
but I think they got into the alloys in the early 70s. So yours is an alloy for sure. It, they call those AJ cases, uh, okay. the cases that start with an AJ on them. So anyways, I'm gonna rebuild that engine as a stock engine and then play around with it, throw it in the thing, and then take my case that can handle a little bit more horsepower and do kind of a fun performance build on that. So I'll have a couple of different builds coming up doing the Volkswagen stuff, just playing around. Uh, I'm not, I don't claim to be an expert, but it'll be fun for me to play with it and do it. So you can get up to, I think, a 17, well, 1820 is the most you can do in, unless you want to cut your, uh, you know, put in big, bigger cylinders, and you'd actually have to cut your, your case. Okay. Um, but I think it's an 1820, you have to put in different cranks, and the crank has to change. Um, you get uh, different rods, and, and so you don't have to change the circumference of your actual case hole or your cylinders. I think 1820, 1770, six is a very common one um it's Which a mild is, yeah it's a mild modification um somebody's saying 1835 so 1835 well then they figured out but i mean you can you can cut your heads a little differently to get okay. obviously some more cc's out well, of well obviously doing some learning before i do that so i'll do a lot of research but i think i just want to do something fun so. yeah but anyway yeah so i'll i'll get one down to you um i'm gonna be down probably next month or so if I put a 271 Detroit in the back of a Volkswagen thing, it would probably do a wheelie. Yeah. Well, did you ever see the movie The Producers? No. You need to watch that movie. The, th the thing is a prominent uh, vehicle in it. And one of, the, uh, one of the guys would sit in the back, and it would drive with the wheels, front wheels off the ground the whole time. Oh. <laughs> well, that's what it would look like. Yeah. Let's see if we got any things going on in here. Did I time travel to... No, I actually drove a car. Somebody's saying a 271. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That oh, that's yeah. still way too, way, way too much. Do they way. even... Can you even find those? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, a lot of them are hooked up on generators, standalone oh. little generators. They're, they're real common like that. Um, hey, that picture of the boat thing you sent me yesterday, were you involved <laughs> in that, or is that just your... <laughs> what was up um, with that? <laughs> that might have been my truck connected to it. But, uh, <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, uh, so one of my buddies uh, inherited a pontoon boat, and of course... Can we, we show the, can I show the picture of it? Sure, if you want. I, all the, oh, I don't have it on this phone. Crap. I don't know if I probably have it somewhere. But uh, yeah, so one of my buddies inherited a pontoon boat, and uh, he said no social media, but I don't think anybody we know... Oh, he doesn't want anybody seeing it? So maybe we shouldn't show Well, him. this isn't, yeah. Don't I would, say his name. Nobody knows who he is. No, nobody knows who he is. And it's your truck, so... It's just this guy. So it's me, as far as you know. <laughs> Uh, let me see here. Let me find it. Yeah, here it is. I don't want to get you in trouble. No. If it's supposed to be private. I won't get I, I won't get in too much trouble. Fun fun times at the boat ramp. So here, let's uh, put it right there. So yeah, we, we had a little <laughs> problem loading the pontoon, as you can kind of see. And so um, he, he inherited it, um, and it was already in the water. So he's got to get it out of the water. It's, you know, October already. And um, so I told him I'd help him. And it's usually a half hour job. And we get the the boat all lined up on the boat launch. We back up the the trailer. <clears throat> and then it dawns on me, he has no idea how this trailer works. And so it's a, it's kind of a neat little thing. You have the pontoon, right? You got the, the two pontoons. This just kind of goes in between. Kind of raise your hands up. Hello. Oh, yeah. This goes in between and it kind of picks the boat up. And then you can lift it out, and then you can lower it down a little bit more and tie it down. But we didn't know how it went up and down. We didn't. We didn't really know anything until after we were in the water. And so uh, then we watched a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's like, oh, I should call the guy who you know put this in. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> how to load a pontoon boat, and uh, we we had it figured out pretty quick. But in the meantime, um, those that method of trailer, that type of trailer, is notorious for tipping and so we ended up tipping his boat it didn't actually hit the ground it, it tipped to the side and then we were able to get it back in the water but made for a great picture yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it took three hours instead of a half an hour yeah <laughs> were you holding up other people at the boat ramp or no um no but it, we were providing entertainment yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is right downtown traverse city the main city marina and uh, lots of people decided it would be good to just sit and watch. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> but we, uh, yeah, we got it out. And it, it, the big key is, is that we just needed to strap it to the trailer. 
And we just thought, you know, gravity would work. And apparently gravity doesn't work. Gravity on one side of the boat wanted to go the other way. So once we got strapped down and it, it got resolved. But that's just another day. All right, I'm gonna try and go through here. And yeah, I see some questions. So yeah, Scott and uh, Kelly look exhausted today. <laughs> I, I pulled up just as they were kind of wrapping up and uh, I, I think that they're both both pretty much done working on the the bus today but it, it looks it looks like it could be fired up right now i mean he mentioned there's some things that need to happen and so it sounds like you'll be going tomorrow morning and i guess you dropped a video today i haven't had a chance to see it because i've been driving but uh, yeah just everything to get it basically to the point where it's at now minus about four hours worth of work that happened after that yeah let's see somebody wanted a shout out do you do shout outs so uh, Bryce Pawson, I, I gotta, I've got to uh, ask Scott if we can do a shout out to you because uh, <laughs> I don't know how he rolls on his channel. <laughs> oh, I guess you can. <laughs> uh, oh, somebody wanted to know what my mailbox count is. I'm still at two, but I'm still pretty fresh as a as a Silverside's owner. <laughs> Oh, let's see. I don't see very so much. So you're really there. blocking out that annoying noise of those dogs. Am I? You are? You're not paying attention to that? I, no. I don't, I don't, uh. Oh, God, I've heard it for hours and hours and hours today. So in a deal situation, how long does it take to pull a silver site or a 671 out of a bus? We had that one out before lunchtime. So... That was like four hours, but if you actually had a forklift and you were a little faster, or you had somebody helping you, you know, if you had a two guy crew, you could probably have it done in two hours. Um, but yeah, it was about four hours it took me to get and, it out of there. And a large part of it is just disconnecting everything and yes. draining fluids. And yeah. I mean, that's like the bus, nothing prepped, just draining the fluids, disconnecting I everything. had drained the radiator the night before. Okay, but so. that could be done while you're... Yeah. Doing just, other things. I, I didn't want to be all wet because you're, it's a lot of laying on the ground time. Um, putting it back together is a little bit harder because I'm using a motor that wasn't in that exact configuration. It's a different motor uh, and I'm replacing hoses and different things like that. So there's a lot more involved. I spent, you know, I probably have eight hours easy in it now going back together. And uh, so there's, there's more work involved in that. Plus things that were broken and wouldn't come apart that needed to be replaced, that thermostat housing uh that that was a several hour job and uh, i got to the point where i just let it sit for like four days while i was spraying it with croil just trying to let it magic happen to it uh the torch didn't do anything to it it didn't loosen it up any um it was just th that that corrosion that happens on those things is just ridiculous and that's why they're all broken and welded i'm not going to throw the old one out i'll send it in to get it welded so you know either if the new owner wants it he can pay to have the welding or i'll just keep it and weld it um to have it as a spare because those things are getting pretty scarce and they're all pretty much have been broken at one time or another. So somebody wants to know how to get a t-shirt because I, I am wearing one right now. Uh, you should just be able to just write, right under your video thing that you're looking at. Make sure there's nothing on my screen that you don't want you to see here. <laughs> um, yeah, there's t-shirts right there and you just click them it's, and then... <laughs> that's how I got mine. <laughs> you're literally, you got to close the text box in order to see it, but it's on every video. <laughs> right there and I think it came within like four days it was pretty quick uh, so. I ordered a hat it took a couple weeks but yeah so we uh, uh, so I helped run the bus grease monkey for him and over Christmas we updated it like four times that it really needed to have some big updates done thank you for that yeah, yeah. it was so running I've had that form for I don't know eight years nine years something like that um, and managing it and taking care of the software updates not being a tech savvy html kind of person i don't know if is html is that whatever it is it it's was just, php but okay <laughs> php even yeah even worse um but i didn't understand all that stuff and i had some issues and then i got behind on some backups or not backups uh updates, updates. yeah and then when i went to do an update it's like hey you can't do this update because those weren't done and those were no longer published or whatever and it was very confusing they changed like the whole root mm format of everything so it was very complex so he hit came in and i know it was a nightmare and he did a lot of work yeah we just the database had to be rebuilt but i 
I got the, the point of bringing that up is I got a lot of help from a kid in Germany who, uh, like helped me navigate some of the areas where we were stuck and did, he had a software that could troubleshoot why it was breaking. So I sent him a hat or a shirt. Oh, nice. So now there's some kid in Munich, he lives in Munich, walking around with a bus grease monkey shirt. Sweet. Because he got it. He sent me a message saying, oh, thank you. And it, <laughs> I think even that took like six, seven days. Wow. Because they have a, I guess the same company has a printing facility in Europe where they can do it too. So so they're, they're international. They're all over the place. Go order yourself one. Um, I have definitely uh, worn this a lot. I, I wear it when I'm working on my bus. It's uh, I'm surprised how clean it looks. Yeah, though. it's still holding up. I mean, it's a nice shirt, so uh, I, I endorse it. I would recommend you get one. Nice. <laughs> uh, will the new old engine have the turbo? Uh, I don't know what they're asking you about. Maybe a blower? I don't know. You you don't. Really so the have. bus that down there is the 4104. It's not going to have a turbo on it, if that's what they're asking. We're just swapping in another running takeout. Hopefully it runs good. Uh, you know, we, I heard it. I saw a video of it running. It started and ran. I'm going to do a tune-up on it. We're just still to the point where we haven't run it yet. So hopefully it'll be good. Somebody from Costa Rica. Um, there's a guy from Holland. So all over the place. Hey, we don't have Kelly helping us tonight, by the way. So this is going to be extremely disorganized compared to the way that it normally is. Uh, do shirts come in 4X? Yes, they do. Because that's the size I, I ordered for the kid in Germany. Um, so they do have 4XL. Somebody was asking what I'm going to do with my other bus. Um, so I was just there today on the way down here. I stopped by there and I'm going to get it going and drive it up and get... I mean, the next big project on that one is to replace all the windows. I just got glass in. Um, uh, today, actually, I picked it up and took it over to the bus and just going to restore it. It's kind of, you know, a little bit at a time. That one is probably not going to be as uh, done as soon as the other one. I think the other one, I, I we've got a bus rally in May that I'm really hoping I get the other bus ready to go for that. So what bus rally is that? T talk about that. So... Um, there is a Greyhound station in Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, that uh, the bus boys in Minnesota have been helping the guy who owns the building wanted to put it back to look like an original Greyhound station. And that, uh, uh, there's another one in, uh, uh, what's the name of that little town? Blyville, uh, Al or Blyville Arkansas, um, that uh, we had a rally at, or a rally was held last year by uh, another bus guy who is silver or a, a scenic cruiser guy. And so this, this developer is putting this building back. It's going to be office space. It's not going to be like a bus station, but it's, it's big. It's the Birmingham station. So it was quite a large building. And I guess a university is going to take over and lease the space. And he got permission to uh, have a bus rally there in May. Um, and uh, the buses will be able to park in the parking lot. And that was, you know, it's certainly up to the tenant who is taking over the space here in February, um, whether they allow something like this. And they said it would be fine. So uh, uh, I'm sure there's going to be more details. The bus boys are the ones who will be um, coordinating it. And these things are quite a bit of work from what I've been told, um, you know, to, to get these, these bus rallies. But uh, the idea is that it's another vintage Greyhound station. It would be cool to get a bunch of of Greyhound buses down there. And so uh, um, hopefully that will all come together. But um, that's my goal when I heard that this was happening. Uh, my goal right now is I, I wanna have one bus in good enough shape to take down there. And I think that the, the bus we just rescued out of Texas is gonna be in, in more apt to, to make it down there than the other one. Um, so I'm going to put a toilet in it for sure and a shower and uh, everything else I can use a camp stove I can sleep on a cot you know everything else on the inside doesn't really matter I got to get all the lights and stuff so I've got some work over the winter so that when May rolls around I've actually got a, a bus I can drive down there because I think that'd be fun and I'll hook up with Jason so that when I break down somebody can fix it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you can come here on your way we're on your way to Birmingham almost not too far out of the way yeah 
Um, somebody said that the dogs must be the really nice neighbors with the tractor. No, that is not our really nice neighbors' dogs. That is somebody we've actually never met. They live over across the holler, over the next holler. So I've never met them, but they sure got a lot of dogs over there, and they bark a lot. So Tommy Two Gun keeps on saying hit the like button. I agree. Uh, he he's mentioned it a couple times. Uh, somebody said, "How do you rate MCI coaches?" Um, I like them. They're very nice. There's a few uh, models that are a little harder to work on than other ones. Um, but no, they're nice. I like MCIs. That, that belt in the back, I hate that whole belt setup. That, the belt oh, of the, death. the big, yes. <laughs> the, the big belt that wants to eat you alive. That, I, it's crazy. Why did, they, why did they think that was a good design? Hey, they stuck with that for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's not like it was just one or two years. That was, that was the thing for a long, long time. Easy to change. Maybe you've got more surface space, so it's less frequency that the belt has to go i don't know i i would just guessing why i don't know i mean they have two radiators so you've got more complicated system with two radiators but they're much smaller radiators too so i don't know how the surface area works out compared to a, a normal radiator it's got to be about the same but they're just they're much smaller they're up out of the way um i i, I don't care i don't care for that whole setup especially the ones with the air tensioners because when they start off they're very very loose until it builds up air and then it gets tight uh, that's just dangerous. I, I could see somebody getting seriously hurt with that thing. And they talked about the drivers, you know, not wearing their neckties and stuff like that because their tie could get sucked up in that belt and killed. I, I don't yeah. know if anybody ever did die that way, but I, I wouldn't doubt it if somebody did uh, because it is very dangerous. You know, the, the German mechanics uh, who used to work on Volkswagens would show up in a white shirt and a tie and then a blue, like, lab coat. And that's how they would work on Volkswagens. And the, the old joke was they must be clip-ons because if the if the fan ever caught yeah the belt <laughs> it, it would suck you right in somebody wanted to know if when looking for a bus automatic or sh or a manual what which is a preference well uh, automatic is a lot easier to drive all the time uh and if you're getting older or this is gonna be your retirement thing you got to think about the condition of your knees and things like that it is not really easy to do all the double clutching clutching period shifting all that you know if you don't have good knees and you know if you're gonna have it you know up into your you know some of my clients are in their mid 80s and they're still driving them and the guys with automatics have a lot easier time driving their buses and with power steering too um, so the a, an automatic transmission like in uh, Lance's bus that the 4106 that we added um, that added a lot of value to it that probably added easily ten thousand dollars value to his bus by doing that which she's never going to sell it, so it doesn't matter to him, but it makes it a lot more drivable by other people. Um, you could, you know, the likelihood of having your wife drive your bus too, if you have an automatic and power steering, is a lot more likely. Not saying that women can't drive the stick shift, because they absolutely can, um, but they don't, my, my wife doesn't want to, but I, if I had an automatic, she would, for sure. Um, is there any value in an abandoned 6V71 with an Allison transmission? Yeah, um... The engine depends on how sealed up it is. If it's just sitting outside with, you know, the air compressor taken off of it and things like that where it's open and water can get into it, probably not. Some of the parts might be worth some money. Uh, usually the transmission doesn't get damaged like that. And if the transmission was good, I, uh, you know, a running takeout Allison transmission is easily worth more than $1,000 probably. So. Uh, let's see. Oh, somebody wanted a spring update for you. Just update what's the status on your spring. Um, it's coming. I mean, the spring's here. It's right on the other side of me here. Uh, we're looking at it. Bo's going to help me put it in. So Bo's, Bo comes tomorrow, and he's going to be here for like four days. we got to get his work done on his bus, and if everything gets done, then we're going to put the spring in my bus. That's, uh, we're headed to Florida for the wedding uh, in about a little over two weeks, and the spring must be on there before I go to Florida. So okay, it's going to happen soon. So Oil Man Dave wants to know where I'm from and my channel. So my channel name is Silverside Sage. No, you can't plug that. Oh, I can't plug no, that. No, because yeah, that, whatever that no. <laughs> jag off on your channel. The, anyway, <laughs> no. I, so I live in, in uh, northern Michigan, a little town called Traverse City, Michigan. And so I, I left yesterday. I spent the night in uh, South Bend uh, to revisit one of our breakdown sites. <laughs> And then, uh, and then I came the rest. Well, I stopped in Indy. I saw uh, Indiana Diesel, which is Tyler uh, Scott's son. Uh, got some, did some tinkering uh, there, and then I headed down. So, I, I'm here on business, completely unrelated to this. I just was close enough, so I, I came by today. So, 
Ah, uh, let's see what else we have. Is there a difference between automatic and manual transmission with speed, with miles per gallon? Yes. Fuel but, economy. Yeah, you'll get about a mile and a half to two miles per gallon less with an automatic over a manual. That's kind of a, depending on what bus and how heavy everything is, but that's usually about what you're going to lose. Oh. Uh, let's see here. I can't see other questions. Driving here. a stick shift is fun. For a while, and then, and then it gets unfun, and, and then it's not. <laughs> as uh, soon as you get a bus to drive a bus with an automatic, the whole time you're like, oh my god, why? You know, it's just so you're like, why wasn't I doing this before? So, uh, uh, Jason, who is a bus with us, and I were driving through Traverse City with our buses, and you know, it's an inner city experience, and oh man, we got done. It's like your knee hurts, your leg hurts, your you know. It's if you're it's not a manuals are not fun in city driving on the highway. You put it in fourth and you just, you know, every occasionally have to go down into third for a hill. But um, it's usually not that big a deal. But if you're driving in the city, don't don't get a manual. That's my opinion. Oh, oil man Dave has a house on Torch Lake. So I'm on the opposite end. I'm on Long Lake on the south side of town. So you're a little ways away. Uh, let's see. So somebody wants to know with winter coming, what would you like to have to help working on buses? A roof yeah. <laughs> with walls. Walls. He, <laughs> he wants walls. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I don't know. This year has just been a total... I don't even need to say anymore. Everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's been weird. I I'm still kind of I've been in 17 states in five weeks with with traveling, um, and I travel a lot for that's what I do for my job. I go to client sites and stuff, and it it's just surreal. My hands. I mean, every time you touch anything, you're putting hand sanitizer on. I wear a mask for you know 10, 12 hours a day. Um, and it's just it's just a different universe everybody looks at each other so suspicious like that yeah. guy got covid or you know why is he wearing a mask and i'm not wearing a mask or you know that all that stuff and it's just been a it's just a weird thing it'll it'll get I, done but i thought it was weird that they're pushing really hard for everybody to get a flu shot this year I'm like, where am I going that I'm going to get the flu? And if I'm washing my hands constantly, using yeah. hand sanitizer, wearing a mask, staying away from people, how can flu season be bad this year when most people, well, not everybody, some people could care less about stuff, but most people are being cautious about it, or a lot of people are. Yeah, I, I mean, my, the, the, uh, my, my wife had her checkup, and they pushed very hard for her to get a flu shot. I don't normally get one. Um, the thing is that the flu, I guess, is resembles COVID so closely that they're concerned that that they're going to be overwhelmed with people with symptoms, and then they all have to take tests and all have to go into. I mean, it would be extremely disruptive when the flu will look very. It's a virus, you know. It's uh, you know some of the flus are actually <clears throat> SARS related, not you know not it not the same strain as a COVID, but. Uh, um, and so I think that's really what it is, is the hospitals won't know if you've got symptoms for the flu or symptoms. That makes sense. I'm yeah. not planning on getting anything, so we should be yeah, good. I'm not planning either. Yeah, so, so I, I, I'm probably, I mean, I'm leaning towards getting another container and then having a roof, but I got to check with the building inspector if that's even allowed here. I have no idea. Um, I just... You know, once we get back from the wedding, we're going up to the house. The house is going on the market. Once the house gets sold, then we have a little bit more options on what we're going to get done here. Um, she doesn't just, Kelly doesn't want me just throwing up something out here. Just, it's going to look terrible. And, but, you know, maybe I could just put like a small structure down on the pad. Because the pad down there is not really supposed to be for me to work on buses. That's just a temporary thing. There's a giant bug on our phone right now. It's going to probably go over the camera part. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> so that's a stink bug. That's eh? a stink bug. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and immediately, the, <laughs> the whole live goes to rail. Um, did you take the ferry? Did you take your bus across the ferry? No. I think 
because it was going to be like a 24 hour thing by the time we waited for the ferry got where we needed to go or whatever it was just like let's just drive it and it was it was like so much it, i don't remember what the price was it's 230 bucks okay yeah it was a lot and it, it wasn't saving me any money it wasn't saving me any time so we just drove and it was i wanted to go over the bridge anyway so so there's a, a guy who owns a silver sides bus called uh, his name is taylor uh, in minnesota he has taken the ferry in his bus and we talked about it because this so this is a vintage it's probably an 18 90s 1910 somewhere in their ferry coal burning ferry it's actually a, a national historic site it's huh, it's I got have no the, idea the plaque i figure some kind of modern thing no 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 it's a it's a historic ferry and they used to run um train cars across lake michigan from michigan to wisconsin this this ferry <clears throat> was a car ferry and there's two of them there's a badger and the and the uh which is the one that they run but they want to load your car. You just park your car and then they put it on the butt. Well, they tried to do that with, with Taylor. <laughs> and he's like, okay, uh, you can give it a shot. But he says, you ever driven a non-synchronized manual transmission in a diesel? And the guy's looking at him. He said, that's that's an antique. And it it's not like, you know, driving a manual automatic car. And so the guy's like, okay, well, I have to come with you then. So Taylor got to drive it on. And then instead of like everybody else gets to go up to the, you know, upstairs, they made him stay on his bus. Uh, he couldn't leave his bus. He had to sit on his bus, which, I mean, it's okay. You got, you know, bathroom and stuff. But um, so, yes, buses can go on the ferry. It's rather expensive from what he was telling me. Taylor's bus is not easy to drive. There's a really no. funny, funny video of me. I think it's another day full of silver sides or something. That's the title of it. When taylor was discussing with me about how his he grinds the gears sometimes on his bus so i went to school him and teach him how to drive his bus <laughs> and i did nothing but grind the crap out of his gears his transmission in that pre-war is totally different it's, it's almost the same bus but it is not uh and it was just i had a heck of a time uh it was the funniest thing i i, I thought i was going to show him how to shift gears in his bus and i did nothing but just grind him grind him grind him i was laughing so hard i had to pull over and stop multiple times just to start over because i was grinding them so bad okay i stand corrected the badger was launched in 1952 okay which is amazing because i didn't think that they were doing coal by 52 they were into modern diesel engines not steam so that's really interesting oh, i learned something so let's see if we got other questions here uh and we probably won't scroll back really far so no i think i've done a pretty good job oh, are you? okay yeah, yeah i'm not i'm doing terrible <laughs> uh lots of highs long beach northern idaho uh let's see uh i think yeah i think we got all the questions so far we haven't even asked them to put it in caps. If you do want to ask a question, put it in caps because we're both blind, or at least I'm blind. Uh, so <clears throat> somebody wants to know what your favorite bus is. I mean, obviously I love Silver Sides. Um, it, my favorite bus would be a GM bus. How about that? So pretty much so almost anything that GM made, I really, really like. Um, I like a lot of the older stuff. Uh, that teal bus that we worked on in Oregon, if you remember that one, that was a really cool bus. There's a lot of metal in that. That's the same bus as what Dave, uh, Dynamo Dave has. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, even like the uh, future liners, I think those are really, really cool. The, the design of them. <laughs> and really cheap too. Oh yeah, you know, a couple a million dollars or. <laughs> Four, I think is what the last one went for. <laughs> They only made, what, eight of them? Uh, I think there was 11. Okay. There, there's a whole website about them. If you've never seen it, it's the Parade of Progress. And so General Motors used to dabble in just about everything. So they made, well, they still, you know, um, they made all just ridiculous stuff and they were very much at the forefront of innovation. So they would do their Parade of Progress, which they sponsored. They built the buses for them. They'd go to these towns. There was no TV yet or anything like that. It's kind of like a moving, a mobile world's fair mini world's fair that would come to each town and these buses the size of the buses would open up uh, i'm going to call them buses but they're not technically a bus because they they're, never carried passengers no uh, but they're a large <clears throat> they look more like a bus than a truck yeah and they would open up and each one had its own display inside some of them had um 
animatronics and different things like that, automation, autom automatons and different things like that through them. And uh, it's just a neat thing. If you've never watched it, go back and, and you can see that. They started with a real, they'd done it for many, many years. But before the Future Liners, they had a different version, which were still kind of cool too. But once they came out with the Future Liners, that was just like a game changer on it. And these towns, you know, they'd set up like a circus tent and everything, and it was a big to do if the, if, if that the Parade of Progress came to your town. Uh, and you could see things that you, you know, even like when television was first coming out, that was like demoed, I think, on those. Yep. Uh, and stuff like that. So it's really a cool thing I think you would like to. Yeah, if you, if, if there's a website and that's I've I've read I think every everything there is. There was a guy, probably a couple hours from me, who got one out of a junkyard, and fully restored it, and uh, um, and then he I think he still has it. But I mean they're 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 the most like the holy grail of buses I would say is those things, wouldn't you? They're, I mean, they're yeah they're really rare, extremely rare, but they're really cool. Uh, let's see. There was a question uh, to talk about timing in a in a Detroit diesel. Um, my only experience with uh, model diesel engines, which are are set off with either or with ether and have a, uh, I think it's variable compression ratio. How does uh, an explosion occur in a Detroit diesel? So there's no glow plugs or anything like that. Everything is just done by heat that's created by the compression. So the air gets squeezed down and the temperature goes up as you compress it. And once the air is at a certain temperature in there, if the diesel fuel is injected and it's like a mist spray that goes in there, it ignites because the air that it's going into is already above its flash point. Um, so it's just timed at a certain position that, that that's when the sprays in and that's all set through the rockers uh, on the t on the top end. So there's three rockers. The the middle one is the fuel injector. The outside two are both exhaust valves and there is no the intake valves obviously are it's a two stroke so they're in the middle of the liners. So is there any way to modify it or is it just there's a perfect way and that's it? Oh well you can modify the timing on it by adjusting the height for when it fires in off of the cam. So you can uh, and there's also you can adjust the gear you can if you take the bell housing off and you can there's an advanced timing setting where you can move uh, the gear one entire notch forward one tooth forward and what, that's all marked that, on there what will that do uh, it's just it's going to give you a little bit more power okay. uh but emissions and the epa and stuff like that is really why uh it's everything is pretty much set to standard timing instead of advanced timing nowadays uh, my, my timing is not a stock timing that i have done on my bus so okay uh let's see here uh another question about when the 4104 is going to be running hopefully tomorrow uh, it was really close today, but it was just, it was getting dark, had a long, tiring day, just didn't want to do it anymore. But it's, it's, it's the bus, the motor is attached to the bus completely. It's filled with coolant, uh, fuel filters are hooked up, all that kind of stuff. Just a couple little things and we'll be turning it over and starting it up. Have you ever had a, butt, a bus that just kicked your butt? Yeah, a few of them. Uh, but I still never cussed or got mad and anything like that. I don't do that. <laughs> Um, he's patient. I, we spent three days just taking one part off this <laughs> first bus and I was losing my mind at that point and they were, they're just like, okay, now take this bolt off. And I mean, it just, just, it's a process and he just sticks with it. And probably one of the more patient people I've ever seen. Cause I don't, after things aren't going the way they're supposed to, I start getting kind of frustrated and, uh, and then my language gets better. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, there was another one in here. Um, oh, chauffeur license to drive a bus as a recreational vehicle. No, it's just not, not in not in most states. In, in, in not here, you don't. But yeah, You're, a few states may require something different because air brake endorsement uh, or something like that. But not not here. Uh, do you like your diesel heater? Love that thing. Uh, how long have we known each other? Uh, it's coming up actually in about a year. No? Uh, Blyville, I guess. Yes. So it would have been, what, the second week in September? Well, we knew each other online before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but, but meeting in person was Blyville was the first time we met. Yeah, it was a bus rally last September um, that I met him. And I met, oh God, a lot of people. I met Patrick and Jason, uh, who I just spent way more time than I... <laughs> 
uh, Jason I met at that same bus you rally. You should not feel that way. He could feel that way. I know. You well, should not feel that way. Because he spent way, way more time with you. Oh, I, I know. <laughs> I, hey, it's... There's... No, we, we got along amazingly well. I figured I'd be ready to kill him at some point, and I didn't. <laughs> Um, it's because you had Phil as a buffer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, da, 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 da. They they all want you to do a live startup tomorrow. Go live and when you're when you're starting it up. So that's they're taking they're asking requests. Oh man. I, I'll definitely record it. I don't know if I want to do it live. I might. We'll see. Uh, somebody wants to know if you work on cat engines. Nope. So somebody from Brazil. Uh, Say it shows me two more weeks. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> add it to the bill. Yeah. <laughs> Do you really he's, want to work with Sage for two more weeks? He's, in, he's in quarantine still. Are you out of quarantine yet, Jason? No, he's got so Friday. Friday, that's right. So uh, Jason, who um, I if you if you go and find the Texas bus rescue, which went way too long um it's a series of videos of me getting this bus home jason and i what is it like 23 episodes yeah <laughs> start to finish yeah i i'm verbose from no from the first time when you entirely oh, yeah, yeah yeah to... starting in so i bought the bus last january december tyler and i went down there in january and then down in february we we're set to go in march with a blower and uh then you know covid happened and then we got back down there in august august 20th and Jason and I put the blower on, um, and then we blew up. Anyway, it, long and short is that uh, Jason is from Canada, and you can fly into the United States from Canada. You can't drive across the border. And so we flew in to uh, Indianapolis, and I picked him up, and we went down. So when he went back across the border, um, he has to go into quarantine for two straight weeks. It's the way that Canada is. It's why Canada has a, such a low infection rate is they're, you know, they're really diligent about making sure that, uh, you know, anybody who's got potential exposure isn't spreading it. And uh, so he's still on his quarantine. So he got home uh, like two weeks ago, week and a half ago, and he still has to sit at home. Now he's working on his bus, but he can't go do anything. He He's got this list of things that he can't get a haircut. I was giving him some guff about his hair being so long. He goes, I can't leave my house to get a haircut. So Friday is going to be like the big party that he's finally free. Um, so they want you to start the bus in your bunny suit. Nice. So the requests are getting better. Uh, let me see here. Uh, how's your driveway drainage going? We've only had one really big storm, and it did absolutely perfect. Not, there was no no issues whatsoever, but it hasn't. We haven't had any more. I want to see you know four or five really good hard rains before I make a determination on on what to do next. But the the last real hard rain, nothing went over the driveway. Everything went through the culverts. There's no buildup in the culverts. Not even a one speck of dirt in there, um, and it handled all the dirt like it's supposed to. And the couple cuts that we made to take water off the side of the driveway, they all performed perfectly. Uh, it, the driveway was perfect after the last rain, and it was a really big storm. Uh, somebody wants to know how an, an oil bath filter works. Um, basically, the air comes in, and it comes straight down a canister, the outside of the canister, and at the bottom of that canister is a pool of oil. And the air has to change 180 degrees. And when it makes that 180 degree turn, the dirt that's in the air, the pieces of dust and particles have mass and they can't just do that. So they're traveling this direction. They just continue to go that way and they hit the oil and sink down in the oil. That's the way the first part of it works. Um, so most of the dirt and stuff just impacts into the oil. It makes it sticky and then it falls down in there and soaks, floats down to the bottom. And then as it starts to go back up, there's a canister that is, let's call it steel wool. It's basically like steel wool that's oil soaked. And any little pieces of dirt that are in that too will hit that steel wool uh, that's coated with oil. Uh, it, a little bit gets aspirated up into there. Uh, and it'll stick to it. And then over time, the oil will drip down and that dirt will fall in there too. And you still have to clean those steel wool things. So basically that's how they work. Uh, and it works really, really well, especially on, on dust. A lot of modern stuff still use it in you know, heavy equipment and machinery and stuff like that. The, the reason that we don't use it, which 
paper filters nowadays are better. Um, they, they have a, the technology is there. You can have more surface area. They just they get plugged up faster, and you got to change them more. Uh, so an oil bath filter has more maintenance costs and things like that. And I think that's really the reason that. Uh, I think that somebody could design something that was like a dual combination system that would be incredible, uh, that would outperform anything that's on the market today. But because of the labor costs and doing it and maintaining it and the EPA issues, you're always having to dispose of oil and stuff like that. And uh, it's never a clean change. I mean, you can never do it without making a mess at all. Uh, but yeah, that's basically how it works. Um, does your thing have an oil bath? Yes, it does. Okay, yeah. So Volkswagen uh, 1600s, they, they moved to a cartridge filter uh, towards the end of the, like I have a 77 uh, Volkswagen that has a cartridge filter. They got rid of the oil baths eventually, but um, uh, somebody wanted to let you know. Oh, first off, I got to mention, there's a guy in Western Australia who just got done milking his cows for the day and is excited to, to see you in a live. Nice. So he, he, he wanted to let you know he, he just got done milking his cows, which I thought was noteworthy um uh what was the other question oh there's a comment about another hurricane might be on its way yeah i don't know where that's coming it's gonna hit the gulf but i haven't heard i haven't looked that far ahead although we do have rain coming i saw that because bo's gonna be here and we're gonna have rain several days that's gonna really suck somebody was wondering is there residual diesel smell from your diesel heater no zero uh let's see here so the diesel doesn't interact with the it heats in a chamber and the chamber is what the air moves over so the two things never come into contact if that makes sense each each one separate yeah okay yeah the exhaust goes out comes out the side of the bus and it's it's not like it's it's not like a propane furnace where well i guess maybe a propane furnace does the same thing too there's a heat exchanger so yeah it's not uh so somebody wanted to know if I'm coming back to Texas. Not if I can. You're done. <laughs> I spent enough time in Texas for a while. I mean, Austin's cool, but uh, Wichita Falls, I, I could probably die and never be back there and feel okay about it. Um, and it's nothing wrong with Wichita Falls. I just spent too much time there. Um, Jason said he's going to go take his plane flying on Friday when he's out of his quarantine. Uh, not any other questions I'm seeing here. So lots of comments on how well you've got your, your driveway dialed in. Oh, here comes Kelly. What's up, Kelly? clear sky tonight yeah i just saw a bat <laughs> oh yeah and it's it's a pretty bright so uh international space station's about to fly over you ever seen that before uh yeah but it's just a it looks like a star it's just a big it like a, block like break it just looks like a star yeah or it looks like an airplane moving really really slow wow that was a bat that was a big bat yeah there's a bunch of them right there well, i don't mind bats but man that thing was huge <laughs> There's two. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're flanking each other. Wow, this is like a little zoo they got going on here. <laughs> the bats are really active right now, which is good. Hopefully yeah. they're eating stink bugs. They're eating <laughs> bugs, man. They're, they're good. Let's see if we've got more questions here. Uh, did Tyler get that truck going? No, but he's got the transmission in it. He has a problem where the cross member that holds in the whatever some of the bolts broke off he's got to extract the bolts before he can it's it's in and held up with the jack right now so he's at least making progress um i can't wait to get my truck so ross from the bus boys uh says hi hey ross what's up? yeah I, I got a chance to hang out with him a little bit he's a nice guy really nice guy he's got such a great voice I yeah just, i'd love to hear him talk he's got that radio DJ well and he, voice. he's like way into trains too he used to work oh, for railroads. way into trains a little yeah. bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> he, he used to work in the railroad industry, and that's uh, fun. Uh, Thomas the engine isn't into trains as much as Ross is. Into yeah, trains. no, that's true. <laughs> uh, does the mini split have a heater in it? Yes. Yeah, it's a heat pump. We've been using that every night right now. Okay. Uh, because we haven't really had to have the air conditioning on during the day or anything. So even though we're to get, the days are getting shorter, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we've been able to 
I just ate a bug. <clears throat> we just... <laughs> uh, so, just a couple people asking for a, a live schedule. I, I don't think you've ever scheduled... You no, just, I just do it when I have time. It, um, it, you just set your phone, do this. When you subscribe, set your phone for notifications, and your phone will get, like, this little thing, and then you got to, like drop what you're doing and then you can watch them i mostly do them at nighttime i don't I, very rarely do that i do them during the day at least in the u.s i do them at nighttime um but yeah it just I, I probably should have a set schedule and someday maybe i'll get around to doing that but right now i have no set schedule for anything in my life so uh somebody wants to know do you still need a jake break valve cover yes absolutely i do if you have one please so uh 671 valve cover for jake breaks if you're new to, newer to the channel, but you're into Detroit's or know where parts are, um, we all want to see him get this. This is like fulfill a childhood dream he's had to have Jake Breaks on a... Uh, let's see here. There's a giant stink bug on our phone. I can't believe he hasn't crawled onto the camera part yet. So you may see that in a minute. Don't get scared. <laughs> uh, let's getting close. see here. Are parts getting harder for the older buses? Not really. So... Do you know how many, like, like Detroit's they made? They made millions of them, didn't they? Oh yeah, mi millions of them. So it's a Volkswagen, like engines, the 1600. They're they're not impossible to find. They're pretty easy to find. And I'm learning that the the the, the 71 series engines are very similar in terms of if you just know where junk is. For all trucks the, all the engine parts are basically still made i mean there might be a few specific application parts that are a little bit different like a certain uh you know like a uh, maybe something off of a radio like a uh, a pipe that went to a cooling pipe that turned a certain way in a certain vehicle or something like that to route it those kinds of things that's not like a common thing so some of the buses have some components that are specifically for that bus but the, the old general part of the engine is available and most buses were mass produced enough where it's not really a problem. Some buses have to die to make other buses live. So uh, I've, I've never yet come across something that I absolutely couldn't find. Um, it just might be that I didn't want to pay the price that somebody was asking for it, but all that stuff is out there. So the Long Brothers uh, suggest that they have one of those valve covers for Jake's and then somebody said Joe in Oregon's got one. Okay. So just a couple things. Uh, is there a type of uh, bus to avoid in general? Not necessarily to avoid, but this is might going to make a few people mad who have them, is you got to be really careful if you're going to buy an Eagle bus. Um, as you saw, uh, the one Eagle bus that, that I worked on in Texas that was rusted out so severely that she bought that, an Anoki, um, that you got to watch, Eagles can rust out severely and you don't necessarily know that until you look at it really close. Everything's like steel tubing or uh, square steel tube that's made out of, and it's just, if you look down the side of it and you see a little bit of ripple to it, you gotta be real careful, inspect underneath of it really, really well. Um, I like Eagle buses, they ride really nice. The downside is that they can rust out really bad and just destroy your dream because of how rusty they get. So that's the only thing that I would say be very careful of, but I wouldn't say avoid them because they can be very, very nice. Uh, what's the interior height of your bus? Um, about that too short. <laughs> <laughs> so I raised my, my floor is up like an inch and a half higher than what it is in, in yours. Yeah. So, because I put down an inch of foam insulation and then half inch of plywood and then a quarter inch underlayment under that. So those three things together, but I still, I'm 5'10 and I've got about two inches of clearance in the middle. So I would assume that six foot you can make it and then if you have rooftop air uh, then you're gonna lose room for that and different things like that so how tall are you I'm six four okay so yeah he's so I have the regular floors which is a piece of linoleum and then cork and then the, the actual metal floor and I've ripped all the ceiling out so there's nothing in the ceiling and I can walk without hitting the top if I were to take that off and add anything thicker or do like a fairing strip or something and putting a new uh, ceiling back on, I would have to walk around like this the whole time. And so I'm being very cautious. Uh, uh, you guys suggested put under 
floor heat. Dan yep. Dan said the same thing. Um, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to put it inside the bays yep. and not underneath in the bus and try to keep as much height as possible. But uh, Dan's bus, he's got that flexible. I was in that yesterday, and it's exact, almost the exact same height as the silver sides in terms of, of that. And he's got the original ceiling in his. So. Nice. Um, I don't know about 4104s. Are they a little taller? I They're a little know. taller than this, and the, the roofs don't curve. Like, the silver sides never really has a flat spot at the top. It, it, it continually arches as it goes, and it, it drops down severely. The 4104 comes across a lot further before it makes that curve down. So it seems taller. It's wider that it's taller, and it, it might be an inch or two taller. Uh, it's pretty close, though. Um, it, I don't, uh, any of them, if you're over six foot, you got to be careful with what you're doing, especially when people put rooftop airs in them, because those st stick down another couple inches. Um, and uh, Prevos are much taller. So the Long Brothers are suggesting that you get a hold of them, because I think they okay. may have something. Um, somebody in Cincinnati just saw the ISS, and they went out and looked after Kelly mentioned it. Oh. You ever seen an engine cradle, uh, engine and cradle about to fall off the hangers or? <laughs> Yes, I have. Oh, okay. Um, Paxson, the one bus that we worked on, uh, in it was in Michigan also. He lives in Nashville, Michigan, which I had never really heard of before until we went there. Nashville, Michigan? Yep. Oh, must um, be southern. It's a very, very tiny little town. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that was the name of his town. Anyways, yeah, his he was driving down the highway, and he thought his engine ran away. The RPM just shot way up and sounded really bad. Then it lost power or whatever, and he pulled off the road. And actually what happened is the metal supports that hold the engine up had broken off, and the ass end of the engine hit the ground and was dragging behind the bus. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they rushed it out. So it didn't run away, but what happened is because it fell, it pulled the throttle it cable. pulled the throttle all the, the way The throttle forward. cable all the way tight. So um, what do you do? <laughs> what do you call it? You can't call it a tow truck. I mean, you could call it a forklift. Yeah, I, I don't remember what he did. Probably in that video he talked about it, and we probably discussed what he did and how he got it home and all that, but um, that bus was still there and we ended up finding some new supports for it. And I found other buses where those vertical, those rods that hold it up on the back end have been rusted through. Yeah. And I've seen some where I could like wow. literally see through them. And I told the owners, you got to change that, that the engine's going to fall out of there. And then I tell them a story about Paxson driving on the road, his engine halfway falling out. Wow. That's, uh, that's frightening. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see if we've got anything else going on here. Uh, it doesn't seem like we have anything right now. Man, this LED lighting that we set up, it makes the video actually yeah. looks really, really good, I think. The lighting came out great. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's not bad at all. It's pretty bright. Can you adjust it up and down, brighter or dimmer? I don't think so. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it has a dimmer on it. It may, but I don't think it does. What I'm amazed at is you're just not swarmed with bugs. It usually... Well, we don't have mosquitoes here because of those Spartan mosquito tube things okay. that we use. We never have... I haven't had a single mosquito here all year. Yeah, I haven't gotten bit. But the stink bug things are everywhere right now. I don't know what the deal is with those things, but my bus is like a stink bug magnet. There was hundreds of them on the bus today, and they were crawling inside, like, between the door and the door jam. They were on the windshield. They're on the side of the bus, the top. of They're just everywhere here. They're very, very annoying. Uh... Somebody have said, have you ever seen one that's been tricked out for a handicap? Um, I I have seen a a handicap MCI with where the door on the side in front of the wheel, you know, there's a there's yep. a lift. I've seen those for sale that were stripped out, ready to be converted. I don't I don't think I've ever seen one converted. There, there's a few. There's a few people that have them that, but I've not seen one where you could like drive it from a wheelchair or with like handicap accessible you know steering controls or anything like that i've not no i've not seen that um but is your bus bone stock no not nothing is stock on my bus for the most part the solar panels aren't stock <laughs> the engine's not it's got a four, a four valve head on it and we bigger injectors and that kind of stuff um, somebody wants you to explain if the extra power you get from the propane injector, the propane. So I'm going to be adding propane injection to Bo's bus while he's here. So that'll be neat for somebody to do that. Um, it's just, it's a more complete burn. Uh, it, it's, 
I don't know what, I haven't had it on a dyno to find out how many more horsepower. My guess has always been like 10 to 15 to 20 in that range of horsepower. It definitely has more power. Uh, I've been able to do things that I could not do without the propane. Um, it just fogs propane in the intake. It mixes it in, it goes through the blower. So it's getting churned up with the air and it gets compressed. So now there's an, a, a gas everywhere in the cylinder when it's compressed, when the diesel fires in there and, and ignites. Um, there's no areas that aren't that don't already have a combustible fuel in there and it's just a more complete burn and it gives you a little bit more power so somebody was asking are gm coaches built like airplane fuselages yes okay many many buses are not not just gms there's a there's a lot of the monocoque construction where uh, it's it's ribs and there, there is no steel frame whatsoever on this bus uh, it's basically an airplane fuselage with a front axle bolted to it and then the rear axle leaf springs and the engine hanging off the back it's, that's why you got to be careful with towing on them because the way that engine hangs off the roof line, which I showed in another video. So literally those, those cross and then that, that frame structure in the back. It's all held off the aluminum off the roof. There is no steel up in there. That is just. That's why you can't cut that, any of that in the back of the bus. You should not cut any of that in the back of the bus. That rear parcel shelf and all that, you should leave that there. Hmm. Does the bus go faster on acceleration and top speed with a fork valve? Or is it just, I mean, what? Well, the governor is going to set your top speed no matter what. But it goes up hills better. Um, it sounds better. It cools better. You're getting that stuff out of there faster. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a better, it's better. Can you raise a roof on a GM bus? You could. I give be a night. There's somebody that's done it on a Cena cruiser, and then they lengthened it too. I think because uh, it looked out of proportion when they had done that. Um, but it is a lot of work. It's a lot of rivets. Wow. Um, it's not like you're just bolting it on. You're not welding it like you would do like an Eagle. Eagle bus is really easy to do because the damn thing's built out of square tubing, and even a a novice welder can can fabricate with square steel, straight steel tubing stick. So an Eagle makes it really easy. That's an advantage that an Eagle is to, the roof raise on Eagle is very easy compared to a lot of other buses. So here's a loaded question. Will you be working on the Lexus? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to hear the answer to that. <laughs> we bought a Lexus so you don't have to work on it. Isn't that what it is? They're supposed to be really good. Um, I mean, I can do, I'm assuming I can do oil changes on it. Yeah. But I, even like my daughter's Mercedes, like it then doesn't even have a friggin' dipstick on it. Like, I what? bet this doesn't. Really? This thing you don't think it's either? No. They, they like them sealed now. They don't, they don't. No, I think it has a dipstick. Okay. I, I think when you open the hood on this thing, like it's got this like plastic fair, you can't even, you literally can't see the engine. Hey, Kelly, will you come open the hood of your car? Oh, somebody said he's got Tyler for that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but getting Tyler to get something done, uh, how long is mom gonna have to be without a car? <laughs> so ho hopefully we won't need to do much work on it. Um, she she takes good care of her, her vehicles and uh, she pays attention to noises and sounds and things like that too. So I t typically things, when things get really expensive and complicated is because somebody doesn't pay attention to that stuff and you know, you drive it until the wheel basically falls off of it. Uh, have you ever gone to rescue a bus that was too far gone to re to work on? No, I've ever every single one I've ever got to has got back to where it needed to go. I've never had to even leave one behind, other than to come back for like you know two weeks later with parts or whatever. Um, We're trying to figure out how we can supercharge it. <laughs> it needs to be supercharged. I just I want to show under the hood because nobody's gonna. Yeah, it doesn't need that car does 155 miles an hour and it's. <laughs> The reason it doesn't go faster is the computer says, hey, that's enough. Well, that's federal <laughs> federal law. Oh, is, is that yeah, what it yeah. is? Yep, that's the fastest the, the federal government will let you allow a car. Now, Tyler could probably override that. Yeah, he might, I bet he could. But, uh, yeah, they set the... Uh, low bridges that you can't go under. Well, I, is my, oh. You have a flashlight? I don't know if that's going to be bright enough. Jason's already lost his flashlight you gave him. What? He, it's in his bus somewhere. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't gone anywhere. He's been under quarantine, so he didn't exactly lose it, but he can't find it at the same time. Should have gave him a bigger flashlight, I guess. <laughs> I know. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, so, vehicle height, I've been told 11 and a half feet on a silver sides, and that's as, that's as low. Like, I, I won't drive under any bridge that's, that's less than 12 okay. feet. I'm going to go show you under the hood here real quick. I'll be right back, Sage. Sure. Back live. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're, it's reloading. Hang on. Is there a, can I flip the camera around? There you go. Okay. This is probably your sign where you're not supposed to be working on your engine. <laughs> You literally can't see anything except for, isn't there a dipstick? Is there not an oil dipstick? There's a dipstick over here, right? Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, I knew I saw that. Uh, no, that's, dipstick. yeah. That's, got, that's coolant. This is, this can't be coolant though. <laughs> yeah, the coolant's underneath of it there. But yeah, there's, so it does have a dipstick and then you can add oil right and there. The, yeah, you can add oil there. Windshield washer windshield. fluid. Is that brake fluid up there? Is that what that is? Yep. yep. But isn't that hilarious? Like you literally see nothing. It's just, <laughs> you, you open the hood and there's, have you seen under here say, or you can see it right now, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? That's, that's a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, I think that's a sign. Do not touch. <laughs> not, not, not for people to work on. Okay. Let me turn this back around. see how that does. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> oh, man. oh, okay, cool. What's up? Oh, uh, there's a guy who guessed my bus weight. I sent him a hat and he said he got it. Oh, cool. He it. Hey, I was pretty close. I, I was... You were not... You were like... Like 400, 500 pounds off, something like that? Yeah, he was like 40 yeah, was... pounds off. It was amazing how close he was. Yeah. But that was just a completely blind guess, right? I mean, yep. mine was kind of based yeah, I mean, on, I had an idea. And I, when I said that number to you, I, I think you thought that that was like... Pretty close. Yeah, well, you already knew what it weighed at that point, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of knew what tools you had in it and how many jacks and wood blocks and all that kind of stuff. And there was some build out in there. Uh, let's see here. How much compression can you lose? What's the minimum compression before the engine won't fire or it, a cylinder? It can get really low. Um, once you get it started, usually the other cylinders will kick in even though they're really low, but then you just have a problem where you have really weak cylinders and it doesn't run as well because of that, or it'll smoke because uh, it won't really run at idle, but that cylinder will kick in at higher RPM. Um, but it can, it can be really low, but you don't want it because there's no glow plugs i mean you still have to be able to achieve that compression heat ratio for the ignite the diesel in it um but yeah I, I don't know what the exact number is to not run but the the book numbers um i don't remember what it is it, it tells you in the book but but i've seen compression you know like 50 psi less than what the book low number is that it still fires on that cylinder so mm. Uh, let's see. Is there going to be another bus rally in Bly, Blyville? Uh, I don't know. Keep your eyes peeled for a, a bus rally in May um, in Birmingham, Alabama. But um, I, it's really up to the city of Blyville, and it's up to uh, Tom, the guy who did all the work to make it happen. Um, it's a lot of work. It was a lot of work. I mean, he... <laughs> He was exhausted, I think, that whole weekend because he had been getting ready for the thing. And he had been down there a week before to get everything ready. It was a nice rally, but, uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, well. Uh, let's see. I guess there aren't any other questions. I don't see anything right now. How long have we been on? Over an hour, I think it says. Wow. Which is okay. crazy. There was light behind us when we started. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. It's gone. That's true. <laughs> it's totally dark back there. 
Um, we, we can be about done. That's fine. Um, if we missed your question, we didn't do it on purpose. This was just a very unorganized, not having Kelly here helping us kind of thing. Yes, well. <laughs> but you did a really good job reading questions. And I, yes. Basically, everybody got to watch me do this the entire time. <laughs> but I'm, I'm blind backwards from most people. <laughs> I can see near very well, and I can't see far very well. So the older you get, the, the more harder it is to see. But for me, it's actually been pretty easy. Oh, man. Well, I should probably get going. I got a probably 45 minute drive to where okay. I'm ending up tonight. So, all right. Well, we'll finish this off here. Thank you for watching and subscribing. And if you haven't checked out his channel, make sure you do that. So, S Silverside Sage now is what it's called, right? Yeah. I is think that... I'm going to leave it that way. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Anyway, so, well, Scott, it was nice seeing you. You too. And uh, it was great hanging out. Take Great questions. Talking yep. with everybody tonight. Have a good night. All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>